Okay, it's uh, 7.30, we're a little later for the public hearing that was uh, publicized for 7.05 p.m. Before I read the notice, I'm gonna ask Mr. Cohen from uh, Charter Communications to come forward and take a mic and ask Mr. Harry Berkowitz, who is chairman of our cable advisory committee to come forward. And the first thing I'll do is uh, I'll read the notice for the public hearing. We'll ask Mr. Uh, Berkowitz for a statement, uh, Mr. Cohen for a statement, and then we'll open it up to the audience. Uh, we'll take uh, one person at a time. I would ask you to come up and sign your name on the book uh, for the uh, public hearing, and we'll try to get uh, your questions answered. Thank you. So let me, I'll read the notice. Notice of a public hearing. A public hearing will take place on Monday, February 29th, 2016 at 7.05 p.m. It is now 7.30. In the Selectman's Meeting Room of the Northbridge Town Hall, located at 7 Main Street, Whitensville, Mass. The purpose of the public hearing is to discuss the relocation of the third party payment center as required in section 5.1 small a of the Town of Northbridge's cable license with Charter Communication from 296 Providence Road, South Grafton, Mass, to 867 Grafton Street, Worcester, Mass. Interested parties uh, urged to attend. Mr. Berkowitz, you came in front of us several weeks ago and brought this to our attention and suggested that a public hearing take place, so we'll listen to you first if you'd like to make a statement. Yes, first of all, uh, as far as the third-party payment center, I'd like that included, but I'd also like to add into the public hearing uh, the fact that we are still in a violation of the contract concerning the location of the public access channels, as well as I'd like to bring up the quality of service that we are receiving from Charter Communications uh, on our uh, cable television network. Right before you finish, Harry, I'm just going to uh, ask for a motion to uh, open the public hearing. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Discussion on that? Being none, I'll take a roll call. Mr. Ampagumian? Yes. Mr. Nolan? Yes. Mr. Mazak? Yes. Mr. Amelia? Yes. Okay. You can continue. I'm sorry. Okay. Hopefully that'll be contained in a minute. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Even though we said it after the opening. You don't have to repeat yourself. Okay. Uh, as far as the third party, I'll take one each individually, third party center goes. I know we can't have an office located because it's not in the contract. I reviewed the contract. Uh, I missed that part when we knew the contract because we didn't pay much attention to it. It's, you know, it's 50 pages. You, you don't get into very much detail as, as uh, Tom Cohen found out he didn't realize that we had the channels listed in there. You know, those things happen. I think they got a beautiful office here, but it still is an inconvenience to a number of people in Norwich. We are not a very affluent community. We have a large number of people that do not even have checking accounts that pay by cash. Uh, I think if you check with the tax department, they tell you there's a large number of people come in on the first of the month when their taxes are due and pay by cash. So, it, you know, it's an inconvenience. You can't, obviously you can't mail cash. So they got to drive to Worcester. In some cases, they may not even have transportation to do so. And I don't believe the RTA goes to that part of Worcester. Now, you can go to Shaw's or Vera's, but there again, it's on MoneyGram, and MoneyGram charges a fee to pay the bill. And last time I checked with Shaw's, I believe they said it was four dollars. So it's adding four dollars to your monthly bill. I was hoping that we could work something. We at uh, Northbridge Community Television is offering the use of their facility free of charge to charter. If they would want to send a representative there, maybe once a month, even or uh, one week out of the first of the month, to give people a chance to come in, where they could pay their bill and even exchange equipment. Now, that's something we're offering. I don't know if they'll be interested in doing that, but we want to put that out there. Uh, we also found, 
and I know it's not going to do it, but as far as rental goes, we're about $2 cheaper per square foot for the same amount of space in, in Northbridge. So, you know, I don't know if they're willing to relocate, but I doubt it because Worcester is, is their headquarters and is central for them. But uh, as far as the mark, rental market goes, we are a better buy. Okay, so uh, that's about all I can say as far as the payment center goes. The payment center is now closed in Grafton, by the way, and you have, you have to go to Worcester. I'll be visiting it tomorrow because I have to bring a box back. <laughs> so I'll get to see the uh, nice facility. Okay, uh, on the, uh, the channel change, we, we're not gonna, we don't want to change the contract. We want to stay as it is. And uh, we just want it on the record that we are still in protest of the fact that the cable uh, contract is in violation. Okay. And we just want to put that on the record. Do you have a copy of uh, 5.1 small a that you want to read into the report? Or I have it here. I can read it if you like me to. Uh, yeah. Okay. Why don't you read it? Good. So the section that you're saying that uh, cable uh, communication, the charter communication is violating is uh, 5.1 customer service office payment center telephone answering service. And it states that a licensee shall maintain and operate a third-party payment center in the town of Northbridge, subject to the availability of a commercially practical payment center for accepting payments, period. In addition, in the event that a licensee maintains a customer service office or third-party payment center in the community contiguous to Northbridge, said office shall be available to Northbridge subscribers. Robocall. <laughs> okay, that's mm -hmm. basically what you're saying in violation. Yes. Okay. But once again, if you read the contract, it is not in violation. Because they changed it when we, we renewed the contract. And it's now worded, licensees shall maintain and operate a third party payment center in town of Northbridge subject to availability of a commercial, commercially practical payment center for accepting payments. It used to say that they would maintain a storefront in the town of Northbridge. Okay, so the one I just read is the one that's in effect. Right. Okay. So, right. We can't right, so we, we don't we, care about the other one. Right, we can't require it any longer under the contract, is what okay. I'm saying, okay. the way the contract is worded. Okay. With that said, I'm going to now ask Mr. Cohen if you want to respond respond sure. to the statement and the reason that we have a hearing here tonight. Sure. Uh, Mr. Tom Cohen from Charter Communications. Right. Uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the Select Board and, and Mr. Kozak, thank you very much for the opportunity to appear before you tonight. Um, I, I provided each of you with a packet of information, with some information on our on our new office and, and the, uh, the language from the license related to uh, the local office um, and what we're required to do. Um, and a, as, as Mr. Berkovitz just acknowledged, we, we're not in, in violation of the license. And it was my understanding that the purpose of the, the hearing tonight was to discuss Charter's violation of this section of the license. Um, we, in fact, and I think the, the notice for the hearing is a little bit wrong because it talked about a third party payment center in adjacent community. Um, we do, in fact, offer two third-party payment centers within the town of Northbridge. Um, the, the office that we had in Grafton was a charter office. Um, and one of, the re the, one of the primary reasons why we moved that, in addition to becoming, to creating a, a larger, more modern facility that has a larger capacity, was, was the safety concerns for our customers. Uh, the Providence Road um, office had had one customer care agent there. Um, it was on a relatively busy street. There were three or four pull-in parking spaces. It was fine to pull in, but but the the same person had to back out onto a pretty busy road. Um, and there were, you know, relatively frequent near miss accidents, um, and it created a safety hazard for our customers, um, which is why we we moved that. So we provide customers in Northbridge and other towns a, a lot of different options 
to make payments. So here there are actually um, two choices. They can go to the Shaw's or the Veras Mini Market in order to make payments for a charter bill. Um, they can go to our new office, and, and I think it's safe to say that everybody from Northbridge who went to that office certainly drove there, and I'm willing to bet that most of the people who lived in Grafton drove to that office. So it's, it's a matter of you're in your car already you're driving, I think it's an extra five miles to our Worcester location, which is in a, um, a popular shopping center with, with plenty of, of, of free parking. Um, there are other options for our customers in terms of making payments or in some cases swapping out equipment. The, the Webster store is also not that far for, for Northbridge residents. Um, it is at 131 East Main Street in Webster, also at a shopping center with, with plenty of free parking. Um, more and more of our customers today are paying their bills online. Um, and you can either go online to the charter website or to your individual bank website to pay bills online. Um, finally, I, you can also, with charter, you can, you can pay with an automated system over the phone. You can call Charter and by punching in the numbers, um, make a payment that way. And, and, and finally, and, and the most popular method of paying our bills is, is to use the self-addressed return envelope, um, put a 49 cent stamp on it and mail it to us. So we, we, we think we are, well, we know we're, we're, we're not in violation of our license related to this, we think we're offering our customers a much better store to go to. Um, and if you don't mind, I, I would like Heidi Vandenbroek, our communications manager, to, to go over. I, I provided you some more information in your packet about the new store. We're excited by it. And, and if you don't mind, could she come up and describe the benefits of this new yes, store? If you and Harry are done with your statements, what I'm going to do now is open it up to the audience. Sure. Uh, for anyone, anyone that does speak, I would ask them to come up and sit to your left, Tom. Use a microphone, but first sign, sign their name. Should I sign address? Name? Yes, please. So, uh, who would like oh. to be first? Heidi, would you like to come forward first as part of the audience? Just. Uh, Put your name and address and speak into the mic, please, so the people can hear you. I'd like to say, Mr. Chairman, we also want to address the service problems. The, the what? Problems with service. With the service? Right. Okay. The, only, the only thing I will mention on that, and I've been a little lenient on it, the, the hearings talking about the, the payment center. Right, because that was the original, and that was over a month ago, and then when we, upon review of the- We should have, we should have mentioned that's what we were gonna talk about, these other items, so in all fairness, the other side has the right to prepare for it. So, but do you have a problem answering these other questions, Tom? I came prepared to talk about this. Okay, office. good. Okay, we'll try to get into it, and we'll try to straighten everything out tonight. In, in, in so we have the payment center, yeah. the storefront, the channels, in the service. Yeah. And, and, okay. And in terms of, of service issues, um, we need to hear about them. And, and I've always been very responsive when I hear from either Harry or Ted or, or one of the members of the select board uh, in terms of resolving constituent issues. So, okay. But we need All to hear right. about them. Okay. So we'll, uh, we'll listen to the first uh, person from the audience. Uh, good evening. My name is Heidi Vandenbroek. I'm the Senior Communications Manager for Charter. I want to thank the board for the opportunity to speak this evening. But first, I would like to congratulate the town of Northbridge and the Northbridge High School Rams football team for their District 5 State Super Bowl championship win this past December against East Bridgewater in a very exciting game. It just speaks volumes of the character and the spirit of the student athletes, Colin LaChapelle, Coach Ken LaChapelle and the pride in the town of Northbridge. So again, my congratulations to the town. That's incredible. Thank you. With advancements in technology, Charter takes that very seriously. We like to educate our customers on those advancements. So that is generally why we opened up our new store. The new existing store, it's not a traditional store you have to wait in line. If, if you don't mind, I'd like to just stand up and show my little picture here. So our customers 
customers will not be standing in a traditional line like you normally would. The customers will come into the store, they'll be greeted by a charter representative will, that will show them about the store and really tell them about our products and services. While our customers are in the store, they will also be chauffeured over to a demonstration table where we have tablets and they can really test drive our products and services. And again, our charter representatives will show them how to use them with a hands-on demonstration. Once the customer care representative is available for them, we have six stations in line, and then they will take them over to our stations. They will again show them the technology and the products and services that we have that we're very proud of. When you walk into the store, and again, I'll show you the picture, it's very comfortable. It's a very relaxed atmosphere, so that customers don't feel intimidated when they walk into the store. Again, it's a relaxed atmosphere. We have a 75-inch high-definition television, televisions around the store as well. So again, customers can really see how our products and services are. And again, understand that our representatives are there to show them the technology. Things are advancing very fast. And so, for example, my father was 75 years old. For him to walk into one of these stores, he might be very intimidated. Uh, my 12-year-old daughter is showing him how to use things on the computer. So again, the generation gaps. So it's important that no matter what age you are, whether you're 12 or 85 to come into our store because it's a really enlightening experience to come in. And again, with technology, this is what we want to show our customers about the technology that we offer at the Charter Store. Uh, Tom had mentioned too early about the parking, which is really instrumental. A lot of our customers really want to go to a store where there is plenty of parking. Parking is free. It's a very large area for our customers to come into as well. And again, we want them to be comfortable and not have to worry about fighting traffic, especially parking. Tom had mentioned also that we did close down recently our Grafton store. Our Grafton store doesn't represent the technology that we have today. It was one little area, and there was really no way to showcase our customers, and our customers want that experience. They were asking for that, and the best way to do that was to open up the new Spectrum store, which we have been opening since last year across the 28-state chart enterprise. It wasn't just here in Worcester, but across 28 states where these stores are opening, again, with the advanced technology, and they've all been very successful, and again, this is what our customers have been asking for with the technology. We also think about the safety of our customers, and as Tom had mentioned, this was parking out in front of the other Grafton store. There was four to five spots, and you would literally back out, I'm sure everyone knows the area, into 122. I mean, I almost got hit a couple times myself, and it's really dangerous. And I don't care if you're a new driver, an experienced driver, or an older driver, it's not safe. So again, we're thinking about the safety of our customers. We're also thinking about the advancements in technology and helping our customers with that as well. So I appreciate your time with the kind of mock-up slideshow here. But again, the goal is to make sure that our customers get and understand the advancements in technology, have a safe experience as well, and be able to enjoy the services that our customer care representatives will provide and help them to guide them for the best package for them and their family. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, next is uh, anyone else from the audience who would like to come forward? Will you come forward, sir? And yes. would, you mind, would, you mind, would you mind sitting back there? Okay. No, why don't you sit right over there, please? Yeah. Would you uh, sign your name and address and introduce yourself? My name is Edward Hall. I live on Willow Street. Thank you. Um, we've already said that the Charter won't have to answer for these tonight, but there will come a night when he will, and I want to let him know what's coming. I have... Charter, I've had it for many years. I've never had signal problems like I have now. The digital signal will cut out, or I'll get the notice on there that I have to go to 2495 to upgrade to it. Or CNN is often just a gray screen. You can't even see it. These are on the high def. Now, I'm not talking about occasionally. I'm talking about every single day this goes on. The service is atrocious. It's never been like this before. And I think something should be done about it. Okay. Thank you. If I could I'm going to let everyone speak, and then let you two speak again with the answers, if that's okay. Thank you for coming forward, Mr. Hall. Next. Hi. 
Hi. I'm new to this, so. That's okay. But anyway, my name is Brenda Silfaro. I live at 71 Louisa Drive. Um, I've been a charter customer for 16 years, and in the beginning it was better. I have a lot of trouble with the pixels, and then it gets to a good part of a movie, and it'll say subscribe to, and it's like, okay, I missed the best part. As far as going with the payment, I'm not a, yeah, I don't do payments on um, e by uh, electronically. I may call. I used to go to the store, and I have to tell you, the ladies that worked there were always very nice, very personable. Didn't mind going there. And um, as far as being getting older and not driving, I don't drive to Worcester. So I want to know, if I have to take my cable box back, where am I going to take it? I have to go to Worcester? You could go to Worcester or you could go to Webster. I don't want to go to Webster either. That's another half hour, 40 minute drive for me. I mean, you know, I think there should be something in town because um, I'm not the only senior and um, there should be a place that you could go and do a payment. And like that gentleman said, sometimes they wait till the first of the month and to get that there on the time date of say it's due the fifth, it doesn't happen. So I can see why they go to the cable, to the charter. Do you know what I'm saying? If I'm waiting for my check to come in and it comes in on the first and I want to pay it by the fifth, that's calling it kind of tight for some of us. So I don't know what to say. And to get a cable box, what do I have to do? Wait for my kids to come and do it when I can want to be independent? It takes that away from us too. So um, there's no bus up there and I'm certainly not driving to Worcester. Okay. And wh where do you live, ma'am? On Louisa Drive. Okay. All right, thank you for coming forward. Anyone else? Sir? Gary Rosenberg, 1988 Quaker Street. Hi, Gary. Um, how you guys doing? You know, I, I think that, uh, I guess every community wants to have the, the office right next to them or you know right in that in that town and I don't know maybe in today's day and age it's uh it's not always possible but I I would love to know what steps were taken to keep it in this town if any um or did we just decide to move to Worcester uh, it does affect a lot of people and you know the people matter so I would I would love to know what actually was done uh to maybe try to preserve something in the general area that might be you know close by to us i'll also tell you guys that that the cable that they're talking about and the signals and all that stuff that is everybody in this town that i can speak to um, and i talk to a lot of people in town have experienced some level of that problem some much more some uh, a lot less but it's a real issue it's something that yeah, you know, it's a service we're paying for it so we uh we question it uh, and I you know I think it should be taken seriously I know it's not maybe the, the top thing we're talking about and the only other thing I wanted to add in there was um, legal is legal and when you move the stations you broke the contract and what's what's been done about that what's the position on that I mean just it's all good it's okay uh, what, what is our general <coughs> position on that it just seems to uh, to not make a lot of sense. We sign contracts with Charter, you expect us to pay our bills, uh, you sign contracts with the town, and I don't know about everybody else, but I expect you to uphold them. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. All right. Anyone else would like to come forward, please? Hi, Karen. Um, you just mentioned so, just sign in, please, oh, okay. first. Paying over the phone. How are people going to pay cash over the phone? Also, the internet. How are they paying cash over the internet? Uh, if somebody wants to pay cash, there are other options for them. They they can go to the store. Oh, they okay. They can go to one of the two three party third party payment centers that are in this town. So why should I have to pay an extra four or five dollars to go pay my bill? 
someplace else I, when I could go there and pay my bill. And I shouldn't have to drive an extra 12 miles. I shouldn't have to drive an extra mile when that was there. One. Two, you're going to tell me that some 80-year-old who, like my grandmother, has never had a license her entire life. She's 91 years old. So now she has to wait for somebody else to drive her because the senior buses in town aren't driving a Webster or Worcester when everybody has to pay their cable bill on a different day. So how is that fair to all of your customers? You're not being fair, but yet you want your money. So I don't understand how that's okay. Once the audience is done, yeah. Jim, the selectmen are going to be next. Um, and then we'll yeah. Any? You, you have nothing? I, I'm waiting. Yeah, for, we're, go yeah. we're going to wait okay. till yeah. the audience has no spoken and the board yeah. members will ask <laughs> questions as well. Well, then the other thing is, too, yeah, the service. I, I pay for services. I, I don't get them. Free, you know, on demand? No. Can't. Can't get it. Oh, you know, whole big red letter thing, you know, ch check back later. Okay, check back later. Nope, still the same thing. You also said that we were going to get boxes. We had to pick up boxes for any other TV we were going to have. We were going to have those free for one year. And then after that, we were only going to be charged $5 per box. Yet we're now being charged $6.99 a box. Six ninety nine a year ago as well. No, the letter that Charter sent out to everybody was for five dollars per box, and it was for free for one year. And did you get a free box for one year? I don't believe it was for a full year. And now I'm being charged six ninety nine instead of the five dollars. And well, yeah, what's two bucks, right? But that two bucks to a senior could be a lot of money. That four or five dollars that they have to pay to go down to Shaw's or Vera's to pay, well, that could be a prescription for them. I, I don't think it is four or five dollars at those things. That, this is what no, I, I went to Shaw's and that's what they told me. So you're basically I was told a dollar fifty. So you're basically telling them that well, it may be a Vera's, but you know what? That could Shaw's. be a meal for them. That could be a prescription for them. Or you don't get to watch TV for a month. I, I don't think that just because, you know, you guys have control of this area, that that's necessarily fair. Okay. It's not fair to younger kids, you know, college kids just sat out who are just eating the ramen noodles, and I don't think it's fair to people my age, and I sure don't I think, think it's fair to elderly. I think you get your point across. Thank you. Okay. And next. Anyone like to come forward, sir? Good you evening. Introduce my, yourself and sign your name, please. Yep, my name is John Bacon, 14 Pine Street. Um, I've been a customer with Charter for several years, off and on, um, due to service issues. Um, I have canceled my service with them and went with a competitor. I've been told by several technicians that have come to my house that it's a known issue on my street and they cannot fix it. Um, recently I did have a technician say um, they will look into the issue and we will have a service member contact you once the issue has been resolved. This is going on two months. I still have not received a phone call yet. Um, again, I did cancel my services previously because the service was so poor. Um, I do take screenshots of the uh, diagnostics channel uh, as proof that I am having issues. Um, and again, as I've said, you know, I have had several technicians flatly come out and tell me that there is an issue and whatnot. Um, they've tried to remedy it by installing a in-building amplifier, which again is only making the problem worse. Um, I do work IT and I also work communications, so I'm a little well versed of what these technicians are talking about. So I do wish to uh, have Charter uh, look into this matter because it's not just me, 
again, it's also other people on my street, uh, along with my next door neighbors. Um, he has a business account, and he has an issue even worse than mine. Um, I do feel that the speeds of the internet are extremely slow compared to the competitors as well. Um, as for the uh, payments, um, I do pay mine online, um, but again, why would someone want to pay $4, you know, especially the senior members of this town? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone further in addition to that? Okay. Being none at this time, I'm going to open up uh, questions or comments to the Board of Selectmen. When we're done, we'll let uh, Harry make a, a comment and Tom make a comment before we uh, close the uh, public hearing. I, I Mr. Just, uh, I just, ahead, after Jack. that, I just want to make a note of the two emails. That's okay. For the record. Okay. Mr. Mazak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you, Tom, for being here, Harry. Um, <clears throat> one thing that I, I, I think that there's, there's two issues. First thing is um, I've experienced all the same symptoms and all the same problems that everybody else in this town is and it's it's frustrating it's annoying you know all of a sudden uh you know i get that screen saying you know <laughs> you're not authorized to have this channel and then all of a sudden it comes back yet i i own every single channel i think that charter offers uh, so be that as it may um there there are definitely some service issues there as far as the payment goes, I don't know if 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 this would be uh, amenable to to a charter. But what if we offered some sort of a way or a means to have the people that want to pay in this town um, not have to pay the third party bill, and maybe maybe charter helps with it because let's face it, charter moved out of this area. And some of these 80 and, you know, some of these people that have a hard time going to various places, I mean, if it's a buck and a half or, you know, a buck and a half to four bucks or whatever it is, it's money to, to those seniors. And it's precious money. So I, I just, I think that, you know, maybe a solution would be to, um, to say, okay, well, um, let's let's look at those third party places. Let's keep them open, but let's not penalize the the individuals that use them. I I personally don't use, um, you know, I don't go into the office to pay pay pay. I pay online, and I think many other many of my many of my neighbors and friends pay online. So it's not about me. Or it's not about them. It's about um, the others in the community that are that, that are going to have a, a little bit harder time doing it, and I think that that would be a, 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 a token of good faith. So I'll leave it at that. Mr. Ampagonian. Thank you. All right, Mr. Cohen. On on the franchisees agreement, where it's section one five point one, customer service office payment center telephone answering, it says I'll repeat it again. Licensee shall maintain and operate a third-party payment center in the town of Northbridge, subject to availability of a commercially practical payment center for accepting payments. With that said, did Charter Communications systematically look into the town of Northbridge or notify this board that there are options within the town of Northbridge for availability to meet the requirements of Charter Communication? because you did not. That alone, in my interp interpretation, was a violation of your contract because there are facilities within the town of Northbridge that, that provide a large enough space for an, for an office and ample safe parking, which is readily available right now and has been for, for at least a good couple of months. So I don't know if Chada communicated that with a list of po uh, potential sites within the town of Northbridge to satisfy this portion of the contract. We, we, we don't have an obligation under this franchises or, or really any of our franchises to operate a local office in a town. We offer, operate in 53 cities and towns in Massachusetts. We can't afford to have an office in every town. 
more and more people, like, like Select Board Member Marzek said, are paying their bills online. Um, we're a business. Um, I don't know of any business. I, 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 you know, I kind of challenge you to find a local Verizon payment center. Um, they just don't do it. Um, we, op we operate seven customer service centers in Massachusetts, um, which is probably more per, per capita, so to speak, than, than Comcast does. Um, we did not, we did not eliminate anything from the town of Northbridge. We still op operate the third party payment centers here. We don't, we don't control th third party payment centers. We don't tell them what they can charge for fees. We have national contracts with Western Union and MoneyGram. Um, not all of their franchises operate as, as third party payment centers, but for us, there happen to be two in the town of Northbridge that will take third party payments, to take payments from customers. But, you know, the, the, the office that we moved was in Grafton. Um, we opened a, a bigger, and we think a more convenient and a safer place for our customers to go, um, not very far over the, the town line, the city line, into the city of Worcester. It's not like some, we're asking people to go to our Higgins Street location or downtown Worcester. It's a, it's a very popular shopping center, you know, um, less than a mile inside the town line. I'm getting back to my question. Was there any, okay, grant that you say you got Shaw's and Vera's Market as a third party payment center. That's payment only. They don't drop their boxes off. They don't go in there to complain about service, upgrading or anything else right, like this. Right. And that's it's just strictly okay. payment only. And according to the license, that's what we, if, if we can find a commercially practicable one in the town, we are obligated to have one, and we in fact have two. And it says, in addition, in addition, in the event the licensee maintains a customer service office or a third party payment center, in the community contiguous to Northbridge, said office shall be available to Northbridge subscribers. Yeah, and, and we, a Northbridge customer can go to any one of our offices. Okay, but I still th think that you should have it's, it's my opinion. I believe in uh, our, our our real estate people did it did a wide search for the kind of space we were looking in that had a lot of free parking um, that was big enough to handle uh, our new Spectrum store, which is you know six customer service agents there. Um, we wanted it to be a good hospitable place for people to go. They did a a wide search for an appropriate place that is kind of central to the number of towns we serve. Is that data available? What data is that? The search? That you're a real, that you're a I, I don't think that's appropriate, Mr. Ampagumian. Well, it would have been nice. We, we, I, 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 it, we invited all of you to come to our grand opening. I, we encourage you to come visit our store at 867 Grafton Street. Now I'll start hopping. Harry can report back after his visit tomorrow. <laughs> Now, also, you know, we do have, we ourselves, such as yourself, have to listen to our constituents. And a lot of the, the complaints that we have about the moving of the, of the center is, as stated before, is from our elderly. elderly. And it's, it's an inconvenience for them. We're all getting there. So at some point or other, it's going to be an inconvenience for us. And... Just so you're aware of it, that they are unhappy about the move. Because even though the parking might have been dangerous, it actually it was, it was a better convenience for them. Now we'll get on to the bandwagon about the service. <laughs> for the amount of money the residents in the town of Northbridge are paying for have cable charter, granted you are the only provider since the uh, the buyout with uh, Comcast is either on hold or is a, or if it's nil, the service and the quality that we are experiencing in the town of Northbridge is absolutely terrible. As other members have stated, that you are in the high definition, you get pixelated, you get the commercial to upgrade, even though you're at the upgrades yep. site, 
Not only that, but I don't know if anybody else has experienced it, but sometimes when you change the channel, you lose, you lose your uh, audio. So you got to turn the TV off, turn it back on, you get your audio back on. The other experience that was part of our contract was channel 11, 12, and 13. I know we've hashed this over before, but a majority of people in every community who are, who are familiar with having their specific government channels and peg channels do a lot of surfing. That's how they go up and down. Even though you've done the advertisement for 91, 93, and 94, I believe it is, 191. 191. Yeah. You know, people still surf the lower channels when it's easier. And you do know that that is part of the contract, which was 11, 12, and 13, which is in a violation of the contract. Mm -hmm. And I realized, too, that it has been nationwide and it was basically put in from those above and dwindled down, and we got to uh, basically uh, <coughs> adhere to it, not necessarily. But I just want to place it on record that that portion of it is in violation of our contract. Mr. So Chairman, thank you. Okay. Yeah. I think um, we hear a lot of frustration from people, A, about the payment situation, and B, about the quality of service. We hear it, and I think that's the big problem. We've been hearing it for a while. We're the only people they're able to talk to because charters kind of out there, they're in Worcester, they're maybe at a phone call. Grafton, it gave you an opportunity. You could bring a box that wasn't working right. You had a question with your bill. You could go talk to someone. It feels like you're pulling back even further. It's making it more difficult. And I, I'm hearing the frustration from a lot more people in town. And I, I don't think this is, is, as much as it's a nice place, it's, it's not creating the, the kind of environment the townsfolk want. They want answers, they want solutions to problems. And so I, th I think we need a way for people to, to be able to get resolution to these, these kind of issues that they're brought up tonight. Thank you. I just want to, uh, before I have uh, Harry make a comment and uh, Tom answer any questions, and Ted, you want to read something in as evidence. But uh, I just want to make, I have, I've been a, a customer charter since you came into town. Three boxes of the internet service, and there's times I've wanted to throw the the can at the the TV or whatever. But it's the same everywhere. I go to different places where there's direct TV or the other type of TV, and they they have the same issues. I'm not making excuses for it. I think we should have the best possible service that we pay for. The the issue I see number one isn't the isn't the payment center. I mean, we're, we're discussing tonight whether or not we violated the statute here with the town. And Harry, you've already admitted that we, we aren't as far as the payment centers go. So we're not violating that. Mass Electric, years ago, used to go downtown to every town had a Mass Electric office. You don't have that anymore. Verizon, you don't have that anymore. So now you're not going to have Charter anymore. Years ago, Charter was right up the street on the left-hand side. Obviously, it's a business, it changes. Uh, do we like it? No, because the prices continue to increase as well. But the bottom line is it's, it's a business, and, and as far as I'm concerned, they have the right to do it as long as they're not violating the contract. Uh, the, what I don't like is the convenience part for the elderly, for the young people, for the middle people, or whatever, for dropping off the box. You know, it was pretty nice for you to go downtown to do it, and then it was Gra South Grafton for Northbridge, and now, of course, it's, you know, basically South Worcester area, which could be a lot worse, as Tom mentioned. But it would be great if we could find some type of compromise, as Jim mentioned, I believe, uh, that maybe once a month, if someone could be at our cable office and maybe we could do some swaps for boxes there, just as basically... Uh, uh, a thing of fairness to the community moving out, particularly for the elderly people. Uh, as far as the payment center, I, I, I think people have to adapt to that. You're either going to put the stamp on the envelope and mail it in, you're going to go to one of these third party centers, so, and you know, a lot of the elderly people don't have uh, computers. I pay my, mine online. Best thing that ever happened. Doesn't cost you 10 cents. 
-hmm. you know. And as you said, Tom, more and more and more people are doing it like that. That's the age today. It's a generation. It's going to be more and more in the future. So, uh, again, what tonight tonight's hearing was about violating a contract. I think we've heard from the audience. We'll hear from you people again. Uh, we've heard from the Board of Selectmen, basically what some of our constituents have, have told us. It appears that the service mm. appears to be the, the biggest problem, and I've seen that both ways. Uh, I don't think it's continual. I've never seen it continual. There's different times when there's a problem with channels and whatever, and everybody gets a little ticked off, but for the most part, uh, other than the gentleman that spoke from Pine Street, uh, I, I don't see anything continual. You know, it's a, every once in a while there's a problem. It might be storm related, but the same, they have the same problem with direct TV. I've been in place, place, places where there's direct TV and as soon as a storm comes in, they're out, out of business as well. So with that, that's all I have to say. I'm gonna have uh, the right. town manager read, read a couple uh, oh, emails or just yeah, two just, people put in there. I just, uh, I just had, yeah. we had, we received two emails, I just wanted for the record. One from uh, Mr. Rosenberg, who also spoke Who's tonight, yeah. and Barry Gallant, and they both, and both in summarize, they were uh, indicating the, uh, their opposition to the move as well as the quality of service. And I know I'll put the, uh, we'll put these in the record, I'll make copies for Mr. Cohen. Okay. Uh, and just, we, just, can, we can print their name on that. We, we can do that. And I just want to add, add that, you know, perhaps um, tonight was really the first time I, I guess I sunk in that we had two payment centers in town that were, um, that the public could use. It would help, I think, as potentially having something on your, on your information you send out to the people that they have this opportunity. Because I don't, th I don't think we, people know it. So it would be at least good to have on the bill or that you, that you that people who wish to pay you know in town has that have that op op opportunity to go to either Shaw's or Vera's if they have the opportunity perhaps you can mention that it might be a minimal charge or nominal charge second thing is I think um, uh, Mr. Berkowitz indicated um, he would also have the option of using the studio and if you can't use a payment center because of the question of funds at least a drop off and pick up that would be something that would be a help for people once again can't travel to Worcester, could, could travel just to the, a location in town for a drop off and pick up. I think that would be relatively simple. So I guess we'd ask you to consider that. Thank you. Okay. With that said, I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Birkowitz if you want to uh, comment, make a statement on anything, offer compromise, uh, whatever you'd like to do on behalf of the town, and then we'll listen to Mr. Cohen, and then we'll uh, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Harry? Well, I want to clarify where we got into the service situation. When we first called for, for the uh, public hearing, I sincerely thought we were in violation until it was pointed out when I read the contract it was wrong. That meeting was scheduled for quite a while ago. It had the snowstorm and was canceled. After word got out, I was inundated with phone calls. I've gotten letters. I've gotten emails. People have stopped me on the street, in the stores. <laughs> you wouldn't believe how many people are complaining. And it is consistent. Now, you might not have the problem consistently, but a lot of people I've talked to say it's consistently going on. Uh, it finally sums up best with a letter I received from a uh, Mr. Leon Duquette of Walker Street. And he says the first thing is the audio drop off. And I, this is a real irritation to me. I'm watching a show and I want to hear what's being said and just as that person's about to speak it drops off then it comes back I seen his lips move but I didn't hear what he had to say the drop off happens quite a bit uh, the next thing is a uh, stoppage if it, it'll freeze the screen freezes you got to change the channel come back and then it'll unfreeze and another thing is the, the pop-ups that continually come up saying that you need to call this number to subscribe to the station. <laughs> like Jim says, I buy most. I got, I got the top car, I have the, the uh, silver. I'm paying for it and they're telling me I gotta pay for it. <laughs> I gotta call and subscribe to it. It's very irritating. I ask people, do you call and complain about this? And they don't because, look, if I'm gonna make a phone call into the system, I gotta talk to that computer before I can finally talk to someone I'm not going to go through that frustration. 
because it's not, it's not ongoing, it's just a if we have another one, we'd have to situation that occurs and then stops and occurs and stops and, go and goes on and on like that. We did a, uh, NCTV did a survey you'd have to give them that. Uh, through Facebook. I mean, you didn't get a lot of responses, but we did get uh, 40. And I gave you a copy of it. If you go to it uh, on the service level, it's the same thing. It's extremely high on, uh, well, first of all, you know, Charlie mentioned channel surfing. 45% of the responders stated that they do get their, station, their viewing by channel surfing. But on the uh, issue of, if I can find it here, on the issue of uh, problems, yeah. Uh, very high. A uh, rate of uh, poor, okay, the poor service rated at 62.5% of the respondents said the service was poor. Uh, they rated the uh, response by technicians uh, much better, as good, for the most part, uh, higher, got a higher uh, rating of 37.5%. So if you do call in, yeah, you do get service, but the problem is that you, you shouldn't have to be doing this. I mean, you're paying to watch TV. When you sit down and, and you're watching, you want to be able to watch it. I had the same problem with, uh, with watching on demand sometimes. It doesn't work, it doesn't come on. They say, you know, I'm not gonna call up and, and complain every time because it, it's not, I don't, I don't want to be on the phone with them, I put it that way. Plus I gotta go find my bill so I can have my number, my bill number and everything else. Right, so that's why I say, we. we we might have digressed into this service situation, right? The reason I did it is because we didn't the back here anyway with another public hearing. And this way we got it out of the way. Because I, I just can't believe how many people have, have called and, and stated that. And they didn't realize that that's what the Cable Advisory Committee is for. That's the only function we have now. We've got a 10 year contract. So we do need to hear about your complaints. And I don't mind people calling me. I, I want to hear about it. The majority of the complaints appear to be service. Yeah. Well, with delivery, you might say, delivery of the right. product. Okay. All right. Tom, would you like to respond to you. any, no, our, any our, of the questions that people had to you? I've got uh, a lot really? here, but, uh, I know um, you've our, been writing them down. Our, our goal is certainly to provide a quality service as well as quality products to all of our customers. <clears throat> um, we will certainly, if, if any of the people who testified tonight um, want to We'll wait outside afterwards and take down more information, phone numbers, et cetera, and follow up with each. Um, but the, the key thing for us, and, and uh, um, I will certainly take this back to our operations folks and, and, and um, do a, a system sweep of our, our Northbridge system to see if there are any systemic problems. Um, we do that as, as a rule anyhow, but we will redouble those efforts. Um, I, I have to say, though, that, that when, as Harry mentioned, that, that you know, they did a survey and, and these people stop them on the street, um, they, they, we need to hear about it. We can't fix a problem of an individual customer. And in, in very many instances, somebody might need a trouble call, you know, a, a charter technician to come to their home. And as he said, people generally like the technicians we send to their home. Uh, they fix the problems. We have to know about the problem so that of, of the, the letters and the, the comments that Harry received recently, none of them got to me. Um, and, if, and if the Cable Advisory Committee wants to play an important role um, in helping the consumers and, and the residents of Northbridge, um, their role that can be to pass those along to me. It's as simple as, as sending me an email with the, the name, address, and phone number of a customer, and we will get back to them immediately to address the problem. But, you know, it, it's one thing for people to say, okay, I'll, I'll fill out the survey. I'm unhappy with the cable company. Um, there's not much news there. Um, if they've got a problem, we need to hear about it, and then we will address it. Uh, we take these seriously. We want people to have good service. Um, you know, there, there are issues that, that, Charlie, you mentioned what I never heard about losing audio when you change the channel. Um, but I'll, I'll ask our technicians about that when I go get back to the office tomorrow. Um, so the service issues, 
we can deal with, but we need to deal with them in many cases on a one-by-one -one basis, and, and we're certainly willing to do that. Um, some of the, the, the issues that came up about uh, the move of the office, um, we believe we, we moved the office for the right reasons to get a better office for people to come to. I understand that it's, it's less convenient for people because it's, it's a, um, I think it's just a five mile further drive. Um, I could be mistaken on that. Um, but I, yeah, I think it's just five miles from the, from the Grafton office to the new Worcester office. Um, somebody's in their car anyhow. Uh, and, and to deal with the people who um, kind of uh, live in a cash economy, um, you know, it's, it's, we offer two stores relatively close by. We offer the payment centers. I don't think, I don't know what more we can do there. Um, the difficulty we have of having people bring their payments to uh, NCTV is that we don't have a, a way of, of recording that payment. People want their payment recorded immediately when they make it so that they don't get a, uh, another bill in the mail says that they're delinquent because the payment didn't get. We can't bring our, our network to that office and, and be able to accept payments. Um, I, I, I don't think I would recommend any customer dropping off an envelope full of cash at NCTV and asking them to send it to us or take it to us. I don't think that's good business. I don't think that's good consumer protection. Um, uh, I know there was a lot of other things I need to address here. Any, um, any, anything about um, a convenience factor with a dropping off or picking box, up the boxes? boxes? Just the boxes. Picking up and dropping off the boxes. When somebody's canceling their service, for example, or they're moving out of town or out of state and they want to cancel charter. I, I believe we still have a direct ship option for to return a box. I think that's yes, and also I would say you know you calling into the office. You got uh, we can roll a truck. Our technicians are out in the field rolling and picking up. You have a, you'll have a truck that will come and pick up the boxes. If you're if you're doing a disco or a downgrade of, of that nature, absolutely. How about cancellation? Cancellation. If you're canceling service, you call up and schedule a disconnect. Technician rolls out to the house, does the disco, picks up the equipment. Is there a, a service fee for that? I believe on the payment schedule it says $35 for if you discontinue service for pickup of the box. Yeah, could you look into that, Tom? Sure. I thought there was a, a fee as well. I think if you if you're going out of the charter system. If, you, if your box is a problem, no, they'll come and replace the box right. for free, service call. But if, if you're leaving the system, it's a $35 fee. That's what I saw on the, on the uh, pr program. You can sure. just double check on that. I'll check. Okay. Anything else either one of you would like well, to like before to, we close the hearing? I, I must say that when someone calls with an individual problem, we contact Tom. He does follow through right away and it gets taken care of. I see this as more of an overall problem to the whole system because on my, my area alone, and you know I know all my neighbors, <laughs> we all have the problem. It's not one here or one there. Everybody has the same problem, doing the same thing to everybody. So it, I don't know if it's an infrastructure problem with the, with the cables, with the wiring, some of the... I know uh, my house has got the same cable it's had for 35 years or whatever, how long we've been here. But it, have you let Tom know? Well, I'm saying that it's, it's the whole street now. But he, but he has to know. Right. As he just said, I've called him several times in the last several years as a result of someone calling me with what you're talking about, and it appears that everything's been taken care of. Uh, the gentleman on Pine Street, it seems like is a, s a similar problem to what you, you have, but if they don't hear about the problem and he offers well, the town manager and the board of selectmen his, his office number, we've got to if, call if here. people want to give us, give, my, give me a call, you can call the studio, I'm sure they'll be glad to take the, the message. We'll compile it and we'll get it in. Just get it in. Right. Just, get, just get it in. That's even better. <laughs> Yeah, or they can call us directly. Right. Okay. Anything else? Hey, I'll uh, 
entertain a motion to close so the public moved. hearing. Second. Okay. Any further discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? None. Okay. Next thing on the okay. the procedure is basically uh, what does the board want to do about the situation? Do you feel as if there's uh, been a violation of the license or the contract? Or Tom, do you Tom. think uh, do you think Tom. we're happy with them trying to work things out? I'm, you better wait. We just try to decide. Which part? We're going to just well okay. just talk Only about the. We we heard, we heard the evidence. What do you want to do about it? Just about the uh, the uh, the moving of the location of this. Or the, that's everything. that's that what the public hearing is about. But, but at this point, it, it, we've already heard from the chairman after it, it's not a violation. Apparently not. Yeah. I would. Well. No further action. Based upon based upon the the fact that it was that the original the original uh, notice said that it had to deal with the location and it sounds like the location is we really can't do anything about it I, I would recommend that we we look at we no, no findings no further, action. no further action but I think we can, I think that, you know, Mr. Cohen has heard us loud and clear that we, he, we should uh, get in touch with them and, and try to communicate issues that are happening within our community to him and so that he can follow up on them as far as service goes. I agree. Sure. Anyone else? Mr. What about the channel? Bring it up. I mean, to, uh, in, all, in all fairness, we discussed it tonight. It was not on the, the hearing. Do you want to make a response to, to that, Tom, as far as the channels being changed, which which we've heard about before that we believe is in violation of the yeah, contract? I, mean, I, I, was, I came to a meeting here in October of 2014 yes. yeah. after yeah. we had notified the town that we were moving channels. It was related to our our upgrade to all digital where we – um, part of the changes we made allowed us to add 100 HD channels and, and double our internet speeds. But in doing so, nationwide, we moved the PEG access channels to 191 through 194. Um, I subsequently, after that meeting, you know, offered to and then met with Ted and the cable committee several times trying to work out a, a resolution. Um, we added more messages on our bills that went to every customer's. I mean, we had already notified every customer, given them a new channel lineup um, back in September of 2014. Um, and we did PSAs on, on all of the major um, cable channels, ESPN, CNN, et cetera, letting people know that the new location of our PEG channels um, throughout Massachusetts we're now 191, 192, 194, and Charter TV3, our own channel, moved to 193. Um, you know, we had several meetings with the cable committee. Um, you know, we followed through on, on these extra promotional announcements to help people, uh, help, help them um, have their viewers understand that, that there was a change. Um, and then the discussions just kind of ended, probably in, in January of 2015. So, and we hadn't heard from anybody since. So, but, but in fact, we have moved all of that. And in that last year, 16 months, um, I, I, I think I received my first complaint from a local resident a month ago. Um, Due to the fact that she was at the January Selectman's meeting and it came up. But prior to that, I had not heard from any local resident. I've certainly heard from Harry and, and Bill Tartaglia, but. I, I think the process has to be someone has a complaint, it comes to a board member, we forward your number or we make a phone call to you for them. Uh, anyone else or everyone has the option to call our cable advisory committee, which will yeah. do the same. I think that's the answer for it. As far as it doesn't appear that those channels are going to be changed. No. 
No. No, we just wanted, wanted it on the record for the public hearing. But I do have a question, Tom. Uh, the FCC ruled recently that you could purchase your own cable box. Is that possible now with Charter? No, the, the, the FCC opened up a docket to discuss that. Um, in, in fact, every, every cable box, when, when you get a cable box from Charter, um, the basic only customer gets the same box as somebody who gets select silver or gold. There is proprietary software in there which limits the number of channels or expands the number of channels that that person can get. Um, I don't know what the FCC is really talking about when they say that, that they want to make these available for sale because um, the nature of our business is customers take different levels of service and they use the same boxes. Right, but if they did, then you would probably have to issue them have a card which they would have to pay for, right? If there, there is a cable card, but if, if the FCC follows through on this, we'll certainly abide by any rules they set. But that's, that's probably a couple of years away if, if, it, if it even goes anywhere. Okay, with that said, I'm gonna open up to the board if anyone wants to, uh, I'll entertain a motion, if any. If not, we'll move the meeting on. Mr. Ampagoni? Okay, I'll make a motion that we have no finding because they are adhering to their contract as stated. Also, we should have a follow-up on the uh, on the complaints of the service within a uh, negotiable time, say within 30 days. Report back to the board on the issues and what remedies they like they are, they propose mm -hmm. for the their service quality. A, a written report back to the board. Yeah. Uh, we could we what I'd like to do is maybe 60 days from now we'll ask you to come back and see if you have some answers with some of the issues that were brought up particularly the service issue and perhaps I'll have okay I'm going to amend it to, to 60 see days what, through through see what kind of responses yep. how responses are okay I'll amend it to 60 days okay report okay. back to the board sure. got a motion happy to. yeah do we have a second second okay any further discussion on that okay all in favor aye aye, aye. Opposed? None. Okay, so with that said, we have to put that in writing and send it to uh, send it to Charter Communications in writing within 30 days, and we can come back and uh, discuss it again. Okay. Ho hopefully with uh, some I, remedies. I think what I, I would like to do is put post on the town bulletin board as well as on the uh, NCTV bulletin board as telling people that they can contact and give them the contact information for myself. I like to get emails because then you got it in writing. It's a little easier to follow up so we can compile this. Okay. Thanks, Harry. Thank you both for coming in. Thank, Thank, you. You, Thank you for the citizens for coming forward.